Here's a look at a whole field of an emerging invasive vine in the Lower Hudson Prism region. It's called Japanese hops and was brought here from East Asia and has now taken over a lot of areas like this or riparian zones or where the land meets the water. And as you can see with this infestation, there is almost nothing growing beneath it. It's a smothering vine. It's actually capable of both climbing and growing out horizontally. And we'll look at a couple of key identifying features that give it some advantages over some of uh, native vegetation that it's displacing. But you can see in this area here, there's pretty much an entire monoculture here at the water's edge. And so early detection and reporting is absolutely critical so it doesn't get to a point like this. But let's take a look at some of the different features as to how to identify Japanese hops from some other lookalikes, even like common or American hop, and how to tell that apart um, from this invasive version. Let's take a closer look at the leaf shape and structure of Japanese hops, and we'll compare that to a common hop, which is used to make beer in our region. Um, actually, the Japanese hops, which you are seeing here, can't actually be used in brewing. Um, it just doesn't have the right chemical balance. So not only are Japanese hops sort of invasive in taking over and displacing native vegetation, it can't even be used to make beer in our area. Uh, one of the other differences between it um, is that Japanese hops, if you take a look at the one that I'm holding here, is uh, broken into usually five to seven lobes. The one I'm holding here, you can see, is very deep lobes and has five. But if we take a look at the one right adjacent to it here, it's actually got those two extra ones at the bottom. So usually between five and seven versus the, the uh, common hop or the one that uh, uh, is in our region that is used to make beer, actually, will only have typically three three lobes. So Japanese five to seven and the common hop has about three. The other main difference is if you see where the lobes come together, they really come together at a very tight, acute angle. There's not much rounding going on versus the, um, the common hop is usually right where my finger is poking through there. You'll see that it's much more rounded. So not only does it have three lobes, but the area where the lobes are touching is much more rounded in the common hop versus very acute in Japanese hops. The other thing I want to note about this is as I'm holding this stem, if you can really zoom in close, you can see that it's got these very, very prickly stems to them. And this is what enables it to actually climb up and over things. So not only can it spread out horizontally, but it's this rear facing barbs or these little hooks that are on it that allow it to climb and clamor and really smother the native vegetation under it. You'll see it's a little bit hairier as well on the undersides. You can see those little hairs that are sticking out in the undersides of the leaves. So this all enables it to have really good climbing capabilities. Um, I also wanted to point out the uh, fruiting structure here. So if you take a look at this, um, at this shape here, you see how it is kind of coming out in multiple different directions. So uh, with the common hop, it looks a little bit more like a cone shape. So think about a pine cone shape to it uh, and, and the bracts or the way that those leaf-like structures are arranged. Here in Japanese hops, it's kind of wild, like an anemone or something going out in multiple different directions versus in common hop, it's really got more of a pine cone-like look to it. So uh, those are some of the differences between between it and common hop. And if you do happen to see Japanese hops, remember five to seven lobes and fruiting structures that kind of go out in every direction, make sure to post those examples uh, to iNaturalist so we can track its distribution in our region and continue to monitor and uh, deal with its spread throughout the lower Hudson Prison area. Because I wasn't able to do a side-by-side -side comparison of common hop and Japanese hop for you in the field, I wanted to do that now just to take a little bit of extra time. So on the left-hand side here, you'll see common hop and on the right side, Japanese hop. And I wanted to thank bpplant.org for this great side-by-side -side comparison. You can really see 
the three lobes very clearly here on common hop. So you see how that's much, much different than over here with the five to seven lobes that you get with Japanese hop. The only other thing I wanted to mention is you can also see the sinuses or the spaces in between those lobes with common hop. You see how there's much more spacing there and it's much more curved versus the more acute angle I was mentioning in the field video of Japanese hops. The only other thing that you can't see in this, these photos here that you may want to pay attention to in the field is that Japanese hops have very long petioles or leaf stalks. So where that leaf blade is attacking, attaching to the stem, it's as long or longer than the leaf itself in Japanese hops. So that's just another feature you could be on the lookout for. Its leaves in Japanese hops are also opposite of one another along the stem and that's how they are arranged. I also mentioned the fruit comparison. So here's a look at the uh, American or common hop. And you notice that it's much more of a pine cone shape like I was saying in that field video uh, relative to this more anemone looking like where the the fruiting spikes curl outward and those those bracts of the fruiting spikes curl outward here, which is like, uh, you know, much more downward facing and kind of curve more inward to look more like a pine cone. So that's what I was referencing in the field video and just some side by side comparisons there. The only other thing that you might uh, confuse it with out in the field is Virginia creeper. So Virginia creeper is another five lobed vine, as you can see in the picture here. But look at the division between um, the lobes themselves. You see how there's they're much, much deeper and more divided. They kind of come to a narrow point at the end. So the hops are not doing that at all. Um, also, Virginia creeper lacks prickles uh, like the Japanese hops have. And instead, um, they have these tendrils that that's how they're wrapping around it with these adhesive discs, these oval adhesive discs that it's using to adhering to things versus the those prickles, which Japanese hops are really using to to kind of gain purchase on whatever it's climbing over. So uh, wild cucumber is another five lobed, um, you know, plant that you might confuse it with as well. But again, they have tendrils with those oval shaped adhesive discs and Japanese hops do not have that. In terms of iNaturalist posting instructions, you can post pictures of suspected Japanese hops that you're finding while you're out and about under, you know, very simply Japanese hops. And here is the Latin name that might come along with it. Um, and of course, you guys have any questions, email us at invasives at nynjtc.org or visit our Lower Hudson Prism EcoQuest website, which you can see here, which has lots more information on these focal species and past challenges and how to get started with our EcoQuest challenge. We would love to have you be a part of it. And thank you once again to our partners and hope to see you out there as part of this Hop to It EcoQuest challenge in the month of July.